36 points as we speak right now. All right, let's bring them in. Our next guest analyst, Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures in Chicago. Oliver, thanks for being on the show. Um, what's uh, jumping out at you? Anything there? You got green on the screen, man. Across Finally. the board, it feels feels like it's been a lifetime. And coming in uh, to the early morning trade at the intermission after 7:45, it's like, all right, do we really trust this rally? So many times over the last two weeks, we got in the head fake where we're higher in the overnight trade and then just give it all back right on the open. So the fact that we're seeing this buying continue past the 8.30 central time open is certainly encouraging, but the bulls still have a little bit of work to do for them, right? We look at that corn market. We've been stuck in a range 403 to 413 since July 8th and just so happened to hit the top end of that. If we're able to get out above there on a closing basis, I think that's where things could get a little bit more exciting. And for soybeans, we're looking at that 11 or 1060 to 1064 level, which was last week's high. If we can get a close out above there, I wouldn't be surprised to see us tack on another 20, 25 cents, which, which was old support from June and the breakdown point at the start of July near 1190. So our 1090, I'm sorry. So I, I think there's some more upside potential here, but we're kind of at an inflection point where we just need to see a little bit more confirmation. Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll need something like the weather or something like demand to kind of put us over the top there, I think you're right. We've kind of got a little bit of a standoff between the big fun shorts and on farm storage and, and, and other longs out there. And I just feel like the clock is working against the longs and not for the shorts. What do you think? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, you'd mentioned demand potentially being a catalyst for a, another leg higher. And I think that's what most people are looking at specifically for the soybeans. We saw pretty good exports uh, week over week and above the four week average. We saw China or unknown, which was presumably China with a pretty big uh, flash sale last week. And there's rumors that you know China may be back in the market this week. So that's certainly feeling some optimism. I'm not so sure that this is a lot of new buying. I think it's probably more short covering than anything. But at this point, we'll take what we can get all right great stuff stay right there though we need to go away we're going to pay some bills we're going to come back and talk more with oliver slope blue line futures in chicago we'll be right back after this 67 37 all right if you go all the way out to april we're sharply unchanged let's bring back in oliver oliver slope blue line futures in chicago oliver uh and you take a look at these prices anything jump out of you there well, it's cer certainly nice to see more green on the screen in the livestock side, too. Just the ags in general are just catching a nice little bit. And cattle obviously got some help on a couple different fronts. A, a fairly friendly cattle on feed report on Friday. You've got outside markets that were under pressure for much of last week, kind of rallying back in today's trade. So certainly seeing a little bit of optimism. Propel prices higher, which is great because they were at a bit of an inflection point. October live cattle was testing trend line support last week and on the verge of a breakdown, but we managed to defend that. So I think a little bit more upside uh, is probably in the cards, but I'm a little bit concerned that the upside may be limited to 187, 188 for that October live cattle contract. That's the top end of the range going back to March. And I know you and I have talked about the potential headline risks kind of lingering out there. Uh, on top of that, you got kind of a seasonal uh, weaker time of year starting to, to creep upon us. I can't believe to say it's almost August, but that's seasonally when we start to see the, these cattle markets kind of stall out and maybe give a little bit back. And we've got a little, you know, we, we need to see some convergence too between cash and futures. And there's been a lot of talk about what's going to be the one to break or rally or whatever there. And we've also got to worry about this stock market and the consumer. I mean, so there's, there's going to be enough, there's enough things out there to worry us, isn't there? Yeah, there certainly is. Yeah, and the cash in the futures market, you know, always looking for one to come to the other. I always think they work together. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that converge. But again, I think if we do get that little relief rally on that convergence, I think for people that need downside protection, it'll be a heck of an opportunity into the end of the year. I mean, if you can do well at those prices and you can lock it in, I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, seeing what happened to them last year at the end of the year and seeing what we've seen happen in the grains as of late. You know, you got to make sure you've got some insurance pot there, don't you think? Absolutely. Last fall, I've been having that conversation uh, quite a few times over the last couple of weeks. Last fall, when they had the rug pull for seemingly no reason at all, right? right. Risk happens fast. So you got to buy puts or protect the downside when you can, not when you have to. All right. Great stuff as usual. Thank you very much, Oliver. Oliver Slope. Blue Line Futures coming to us from uh, Chicago. Um, good stuff.